Hello there, folks. Space Doyster here, and welcome back to Laggy Pokemon. Uh, well, Laggy Pokemon Platinum with Charmander instead of Chimchar, or instead of anything else, really. And in the last part, we defeated Commander Mar thanks to the super totally broken Dragon Rage. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then we uh, made our way here to Eterna City and caught a Metatite. And in this part, we will be uh, tr uh, battling the trainers on this route specifically before we go take on the gym. Um, unfortunately, I've been looking up um, move sets and stuff on the internet, and I have learned something very unfortunate and disturbing about poor Yoga Pun here. Uh, it doesn't learn a good fighting type move for it to use until level 29. So hopefully I can get my hands on ATM to teach it something of else before then. That or I'll just have to make do with uh, Rock Tomb Confusion and anything else I can have to teach it. Maybe I could give it Return. Now, he might do good with Return, but then again, it's pretty early in the adventure, so I have no idea if he'll actually do well with Return. What I do know is that this kid has another Zubat, so we're going to rock to it. <laughs> and who's in? One other thing that makes me kind of iffy about using Metatite and Metacham is that two of their best fighting type moves, or one of them is high jump kick and high jump kick uh, it has 90 accuracy which normally wouldn't be too much of a deal breaker but if it misses you take recoil damage and that tends to be very iffy so yeah I'm not too sure if I'm actually going to use high jump kick even though it's generally one of the best options for a fighting type move for the critters that do get it. Eh, the recoil is just too much for me to bank on, or is too much for me to really rely on wanting, really wanting to use it, or whatever I'm trying to say. Imagine that I said that. Anyway, hidden power. Hidden power. That is another move that Yoga Pun has just learned. Um, I believe since this is Generation 4, it is still possible for um, Hidden Power to be affected by the po or Hidden Power's power to be affected by the Pokemon's stats. So your Pokemon's stats will determine how strong Hidden Power is and what type. Uh, starting with Generation 5 and then all the way up till 7, uh, your Pokemon's um, your Pokemon stuff would only affect um, Hidden Power's. Uh, type and its power was fixed at 60. Um, before it got cut in generation whatever, generation 8, um, hidden power was the pretty much the go-to move for a lot of Pokemon who lacked coverage. And when they made it exclusively a special move, that kind of limited the Pokemon that could use it. But it's still a it was still a very useful filler option, even when its power got completely limited to um, 60. I don't remember what it would have been, or what it could have been higher than that, but eh, whatever. Anyway, let's see what we got uh, by testing it on this Geodude. Alright, well, it's something that is super effective against Geodude, which means it can be quite a few types. It could be fire, grass, ground... Wait, no, it can't be fire. It could be water, grass, ground, fighting. Water, grass, ground, fighting. Um, steel. Mm, and I... Oh, and ice. Ice. It could also be ice. Those are a lot of possible options. Eh, does not really matter what type it is, though. Metatite won't be holding on to it for very long. Poor little Yoga Pun doesn't actually really need a special move because he has pure power. It's not very effective. Oh no, Yoga Pun lost speed. Well, take that. You have been confused, sir. Puns gaining levels. Alrighty. Yeah, and 
And then in this game, there actually are move tutors that can teach some very useful uh, coverage moves, the chief among them being the elemental punches. Um, the fact that those are in this game is part of the reason why Chimchar is definitely one of the best starters to have ever existed ever in the history of mankind ever, ever. Anyway, um, and I believe Metatite can learn a fair chunk of the elemental punches too, so that might be worth considering for him. But you have to get a bunch of um, those shards. I've picked up a few here and there, but haven't really commented on it. But the main place to get shards is in the underground, so if I wanted to collect those, it would be a bit tedious. Alright, let's just rock to it. I mean, I guess I could use Starly to try and narrow down what my hidden power type is. But I already have coverage against Starly, so I don't really need to uh, test if it's an ice-type move. Or bank on it being an ice-type move. Alrighty. Toot toot. You know what? Let's cut down the fluff and see if we can narrow it down. Hi hypnosis How dare you. You know what? Just for that, we're not going to use hidden power on your hoo hoo. We're just going to drop some rocks on it. It might be better to swap Yoga Pun out, though. Hoot Hoot is very. Ugh. Alright. Yeah, Reflect is going to reduce physical damage for a bit, so. Ugh. I believe. Yep. Uh, uproar. So while Uproar is in effect, uh, Pokemon on the battlefield cannot be put to sleep. Or they can't stay asleep either. Alright. Uh, neutral damage against Tutut. That means it is not ice or grass or ground. Uh, meaning all we have left to work with is steel or water. Oh yeah, you want to keep making up or hoot hoot? Well, I'm gonna burn you. Oh yeah. Actually, the, all of this talk about physical and special moves makes me want to uh, commentate on what Charmander, or rather Charizard, um, is capable of. Or yeah, I guess that's the right way to phrase it. Uh, so Charizard normally has a little bit higher special attack than physical attack. So. It would normally be considered a special attacker since, oh my goodness, look at that special attack. But Charizard actually has a pretty decent physical move pool as well. Why am I using a potion? We do not need to use them here. Eh, gotta be more conservative. Oh, TM12 taunt. Anyway, um, and owing, or contributing to the fact that Charmander can be a much better physical attacker is the fact that it gets two very good uh, setup moves for physical attacks. It gets Belly Drum and Dragon Rage. Not Dragon Rage, Dragon Dance. So, even though Char Charizard can be billed as a special attacker, it's actually much better off using its physical stats. I think that might be part of the reason are part of the contribution to Mega Charizard X standing out over Mega Charizard Y. I still can't believe they added both or gave Charizard two evolution and mega evolutions when they added that in. Eh, makes me wish that they did they had just stuck to the mega evolution gimmick instead of trying to replace it, because everything they've done since has been kind of worse, I-M-O. Anyway, since we are going to actually need to go underground, let's go ahead and pick that up. So, if you want to go to the underground, talk to this guy. I am! I am the first to have gone underground and dug some tunnels. You can call me the underground man. Everyone else does. I'll make a gift of this to you. You hold up your end of the deal and put it to good use. The Explorer Kit. My gift to you, the Explorer Kit, will instantly take you underground. You need only use it, and you will be down in the tunnels. The underground is a different world where you can do this, that, and the other thing, too. Let, my, let me mentor you into becoming a full-fledged spelunker. Will you take on the challenge? No. 
I had hoped to teach a youngster like you about the many charms of the underground tunnels. But I can't force you to accept my proposal if you're not inclined. Sigh. I get so lonely sometimes. Oh wow, they don't force me to say yes to that guy. That's neat. Alright, anyway. Anyway, moving on. We already healed up the Pokemon Center. Um, Yoga Pun and Plant Pun and Fire Pun. They're all doing great and they're going to make puns. I gotta actually think of a, of a fire pun and a yoga pun and a plant pun to call them because that is getting a little tedious having to call them the puns. But then again, if I keep with the naming convention, we shall see. Anyway, anyway, let us see about buying 11 super potions. Yes! And spend the rest on Pokeballs. I should probably wait to do shopping until after the gym. But just in case I happen to lose somehow, I do want to be prepared. Which is a very nice song, and there were idiots for cutting it from the live action movie. Anyway, this is the gym leader, Gardenia. Hi, I'm Gardenia. I'm this town's gym leader. My last challenger was this awfully speedy young guy. Actually, his name was Barry. He told me about you. He said that another challenger's on the way, so that made me antsy. At my gym, no one gets to battle the gym leader, me, until the end. The challenger has to beat all the other gym trainers first. I'll be waiting for you in the back, trainer. Don't disappoint me. My name's not trainer, my name's Lucas. Although one habit I've uh, actually gotten into is just naming the player or the player character in Pokemon games player. <laughs> uh, it was uh, something I did while recording other Pokemon videos, um, specifically the ones about Paris and Bulbasaur. And I was wor working on one for Wooper, but I lost my uh, video footage of that. Uh, anyway, what was I going on about? Oh, right. But I guess I could just start calling them trainer, I suppose. Hmm. Hey, anyway, Gardenia's gym. So this gym is one of the few that got revamped. Or actually, is it only a few? Anyway, um, they revamped it in the uh, here in Platinum compared to Diamond and Pearl. So that's it. All right. Since it was neutral against the bird, uh, super effective against the rocks, and not very effective against the grass, that means our hidden power type is water. Could be worse. All right, well, let's see if Yoga Pun can handle this Cherubi. And Leech Seed is where I draw the line. Leech Seed. So, um, grass tends to be ass in the main, um, or when you're playing through the game normal, all normal like. Uh, since grass has very poor offensive coverage, it's resisted by a bunch of types, and it is weak to a bunch of types too. So not, you know, not very good. But grass does have a few tools at, or I should say grass types, do have a few tools at their fingertips, or uh, leaf tips, I should say, that make them uh, pretty efficient at dealing, well, not efficient, pretty good at dealing with opponents should they need to. So they can set up, uh, they can cause a lot of status conditions, they can use leech seed to uh, periodically drain health, yada yada yada. It's basically the thinking man, man's type to, in a game where you just press A and win. So that's part of what makes grass ass when you're going through the main game, but in competitive sense, grass tends to perform a bit better since all that setup stuff works so much more effectively. All right. There we go. So, yeah, the, uh, the redesign they decided to go with, uh, with the grass type gym is that there's a big floral clock and you beat a trainer to change the time and then you can jump on it to get to the next trainer. It's very tedious and it's kind of... But that's the uh, weird part about Pokemon games is that they pretty much have to... Um, what, am I, what was I trying to say? Well, I guess I was trying to say they tried to incentivize players to go after trainers rather than just skipping them. Um, 
since uh, these gym trainers can only be challenged the first time you go to a Pokemon gym. If you skip them, you miss out on all the experience points you could have gained just from battling them, but it also allows you to go through the game quicker. It was a, um, it was a neat choice to be able to make. Uh, in my youth, I'd avoid gym trainers as much as possible. Uh, these days, I never skip any of them because they are all worth battling, and that is juicy experience. But it can vary from player to player. You do you, folks. You do you. But I think um, with Platinum here, or, well, starting in Generation 4, because it was the same in the last game, uh, they wanted players to definitely battle the gym trainers, so that way they'd be as prepared as possible for the gym leader. And I think a part of that is because they removed the badge boosts. So, if you watch a lot of J-Rose's videos, you'll be familiar with Generation 1's badge boost glitch, where some of the badges are supposed to boost one of your stats, and that if you use any boosting move or have your stats altered in any way, the game glitches out and applies your badge boosts again. So the badge boosts, um, they kept those in until Generation 3, so, um, so they could have the level curve uh, spike up insanely up until that point, and your Pokemon should be able to keep pace with the level curve despite, or keep pace with higher level Pokemon despite being behind on the level curve, simply because, um, oh, how am I trying to phrase these things? Uh, simply because they're getting so many boosts that the opponents aren't getting. So your Pokemon earn, um, uh, earn stat experience or effort values starting in Generation 3, whereas your opponents, you almost always have their, their stat experience and effort values set at zero. So you always have the stat advantage if you're fighting them at the roughly the same level. And then the badge boost would uh, give you for, um, even more stats on top of that. So even though uh, even though you would have a low-level critter, it would still perform as if it were at a much higher level. Uh, I think the badge boosts were often in invisible, so you couldn't really see how much uh, they increased your stats in the game. But it was a... Er, I want to say it was a noticeable increase, but I actually don't really notice the badge boosts. I always thought it was flavor text that the gym leaders... Uh, that was just added for the gym leaders to have more to say. Eh. Anyway. Generation 4, though, they actually removed the badge boost. So I think they wanted to make more of the gym trainers non-optional uh, to try and make up for the fact that players, uh, players now need the... Uh, to stay more even with the level curve than they did before, since they now don't have a stat increase to make up for the level difference. That could be it, but I'm not 100% sure. What I am more sure about, though, is that um, the badge boost uh, started off pretty strong in Generation 1. I think it was like a 12% boost, and then they made it uh, substantially lose... Uh, uh, not looser, uh, smaller in Generation 3. I don't know if it was the same as the first generation in Generation 2 or not, but that's not the point. What is the point is we need to go back to the Pokemon Center to heal, because I don't like to use status condition healing items unless it's an absolute emergency. That is not something I will change my ways about. Mm. It also makes full restores the best healing items ever, because they fully heal you and then they heal your status conditions. It's like an Essena and a Benediction. Yeah. No, anyway, anyway. So yeah, starting in Generation 4, they removed the badge boost glitch, which actually made the Heart Gold Soul Silver remakes a bit more questionable since they didn't do much to make up for the fact that the level curve in that game is pathetically, um, what's the right word? Imbalanced, I guess, is the best way to go for it. Um, 
the level curve in the Johto region is just sad. Very, very sad. Most of the Pokemon in the game are around level 15-ish to 20-ish, but the gym leaders around that same point in the game have level or Pokemon whose levels range from 25 to 36. So if you aren't making good use of the limited experience available in Johto, you're going to fall horribly behind the level curve and losing the... Oh, wow, that was a one-hit KO. How dare you knock out my yoga pun? I'm gonna have to get back at you with my fire put. Aha! Take that, you're on fire now. Oh, uh, where was I? Oh, right. So, by removing the badge boost glitch, but, or not glitch, but removing the badge boosts and um, not fixing the level curve to ha have it play out more consistently, uh, if you're playing the remakes of Heart Gold and Soul Silver, it's very important that you use fewer critters so you can keep up with the level curve. Or stay closer to it. Because um, the only other advantage you'll be getting compared to the higher level trainers is um, stat experience or even effort values. Since that is Generation 4, they have effort values. And also leveraging type advantages but since the AI tends to not swap unless it absolutely has to. Alrighty. I do want to heal up Yoga Pun. I don't know when I'm going to get the EXP share, but when I do, that will make things so much easier. All right, anyway, what were we doing here? What are we doing here? Oh, right, 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 right. So we're going to have to go back and heal up again because Yoga Pun's fainted and Fire Pun is paralyzed. But I think I'm just going to lead the charge with Fire Pun. This is the Grass type gym. Grass is one of the four types Fire deals super effective damage to. So, you know, it only makes sense to lead with the fire. And then we burn them all down. Alrighty. And I should probably spend what little money I have left just in case I lose. Because uh, even with a type advantage, Gardenia can actually be very, very tricky to deal with. They gave her some pretty, pretty strong critters. They tend to do that a lot with second gyms, I notice, because uh, in Generation 1, they gave Misty a Stormy, and if you know anything about competitive Pokemon, you know that Stormy is bay. But also because Stormy is really fast in Generation 1, um, it's able to get a lot of critical hits due to how critical hits work in that game. Uh, you know, it's just by a couple sort of potions. Not the most efficient use of my money, but we're not about efficiency here. We're just about spending it all, so we don't have to worry about losing any. Alright, without a bank, that's pretty much all you can do with your, your money in a Pokemon game, but fortunately, almost everything you can spend your money on is worth buying. So, little column A, little column B. Alright, anyway, anyway... All right, no need to save. We're not resetting if we lose anyway, so let's jump right in. You kept me waiting. I'm Eterna's gym leader, Gardenia, the grass type master. When I first saw you, I was convinced you'd find your way to me. My hunch was right on the money. You have a winning aura about you. So anyway, this will be fun. Let's have our battle. Yeah, that's actually something that mildly disappoints me about Pokemon games. They don't really acknowledge if they beat you before. There are a few situations where the trainer or the enemy trainers will acknowledge, oh, you're back, or something to that effect. But most of the time they're just their text just replays as if you're you're talking to them for the first time. Uh, it does count uh, cut a few things down here and there, but generally it's just an exact repeat. Super potion? That's not gonna help you. Anyway, um, Gardenia has a Turtwig, so if you did not pick the grass or water starters, she's going to show you Turtwig, and then there are a few trainers later who will have a Grottle and Torterra. So, yeah, no need to worry about not seeing Turtwig, because Turtwig was there. Anyway, Cherim. Cherim is a very weird Pokemon. Um, 
it has an ability Flower Gift that will boost its allies, uh, I think, special defense and physical attack when the, the sunlight is bright. It's very gimmicky. And its stats are low, hence why it's being used by the second gym leader. It look, I, I think it looks neat, though. And that was a siren. All right, anyway. Her ace, Rose Raid. So Rose Raid might be what causes us to use this, depending on its coverage moves. I don't know, stun spore, so that's a thing. All right, anyway, we're just gonna keep burning it. Um, Rose Raid is the newly introduced evolved form of Roselia. Generation four gave Roselia a baby and an evolved form. It's very neat. Oh no, we've been Petralized. This is so not good. Um, I think we're gonna go for a Dragon Rage. Alright, and if she's using a Magical Leaf, I think that means this Rose, Rose Raid only has Grass moves to attack with. But I think uh, Dragon Rage at this point is a guaranteed KO. So we got this! Fire Pun swept the gym. Almost literally, I tried to use Meta... Er... Yeah, Yoga Pun, but Yoga Pun did not get to do much. Amazing! You're very good. Nah, I didn't catch the rest of that. Whatever. I might have said it before, but you're really tough. Wasn't it hard for you to raise your Pokémon to be so good? I guess that's a measure of how much you love your Pokémon. In recognition of that, I proudly grant you this. Yay, we got the Forest Badge from Gardenia! With the Forest Badge, your Pokémon can use the hidden move Cut outside of battle. Now that you have two, bad two Gym Badges, all Pokémon you received in trades will obey you up to level 30. I've also got something else. It's a gift from me. TM86! That TM86 contains the move Grass Knot. It's one of my favorite moves. The heavier the foe, the more damage this move will cause. Yeah, um, so Grass Knot tends to be a very useful move, surprisingly. Um, um, well, in the competitive scene, if you're battling online against other people and whatnot, um, most of the good Pokémon actually do weigh a fair bit, or at least they weigh enough where uh, Grass Knot deals a good enough or a good amount of damage that you can rely on it to get you KOs when you would need them to, or need it to. It's also a uh, widely available coverage move. I know Chimchar can learn it, I think Pikachu can learn it, so Pikachu will have a uh, coverage against um, uh, ground types it would otherwise struggle against, yada yada yada. So, Grass Knot ends up being a pretty neat coverage move to consider, much like Low Kick, oddly enough. Low Kick is also a fighting type move that deals damage based on the opponent's weight. Um, Oh, right, we're gonna have to teach something cut. So I think with the way I have my team planned out, I may eventually need to teach cut to Charmander, but for now, I'm going to plop it on Bidoof. So, um, yeah. But yeah, if I need cut later in the game after I've dropped Bidoof from the roster, then I can just teach it to Charmander, I suppose. Although I would really hate to take up one of its move slots with an attack I'm never going to use, but that's the price to pay for having TM, or not TMs, HMs. Now, anyway, over here we got TM46, Thief. Ah, uh, can Meditate learn that, actually? Because he needs other moves. He mostly learns special moves until he uh, gets later on. No, he can't Thief. He can return, though. I should probably just teach that to Meditate. Normal type coverage may not be super effective or flashy, but it gets the job done. Hello, it is me. Me! Mm-hmm, I have startled you, yes. I am, after all, an officer of the International Police. It is only natural that I be a master of disguise. 
Incidentally, you are a first-rate trainer. Of that, I am very aware. I therefore think you will be okay, but I must warn you to be careful anyway. Also, a word of advice. This building, it has two stairs. One of them, a trap it must be. But the crooks of Team Galactic, they do not appear... How shall I say? Smart. There should be an easy way to tell the stairs apart. Um, well, there probably is. I kind of forget the gimmick to it, but it should become immediately apparent. Um, let's see. I believe the ones with signs are the ones where you're supposed to go. The path you choose leads to glory. But those are battles, and we like to battle. We're like a uh, rival lady in the new game. I keep forgetting her name. So I just call her rival lady. Alright, anyway. So, yeah. Um... These older games tend to support double battles a lot more consistently. Um, they do have the trainers who follow you around to help you out with stuff. Those guys, or guys and gals, those make every battle you get into a double battle. And then uh, they have trainers situated like these galactic grunts were, where they're both looking in the same direction, and if they spot you at the same time, they'll both challenge you to a battle at the same time. So even though they don't have any, er, yeah, the Sinnoh region doesn't have any trainers who specialize in double battles, or I should say gym leaders, um, there's still plenty of double battles to be had. Which is neat. Alrighty, let's, um, focus on the back, because I want to make sure we take it down. Oh, I expected the Glammy out to use Fake Out. That was an unexpected change of plans. If I'd known it, yeah, if I'd known it was going to scratch instead of fake out, I would have le left the Zubat to Yoga Pun. All right, well, whatever. The only downside to doing a bunch of double battles, though, is is that um. Uh, Oh yeah, it cuts the experience your active Pokémon earns in half, since it has to split it between um, your active Pokémon plus the other active Pokémon. Uh, if you're in, if you're with one of the um, uh, following trainers, who are referred to as stat trainers, since when you unlock the battle tower later on, you can team up with one of them, and they always use Pokémon who specialize in a specific stat. Uh, the Lady Cheryl we ran into is the HP stat trainer. Anyway, where was I going? Oh, right. Um, but when it's just you doing double battles, your two active Pokémon have to share the experience points that they would earn, so that can actually cut into what your active Pokémon would be getting. Um, and if you have to swap one of your Pokémon out, that splits the experience for each victory in three ways. So double battles, while they are certainly neat and make things a bit faster and more interesting than all single battles, uh, it also tends to make it more difficult to train up a specific Pokemon, since you now have to have something else out to contribute to the battle. I don't think they force you into double battles, though. Um... Oh, right, and then a running joke with Team Galactic is that no one really seems to know what their goals are. Ooh, Krogunk. And Krogunk has an ability called Anticipation. So, Anticipation is probably the worst of Krogunk's two potential abilities. Um, all it does is it makes the Pokémon react if its opponent knows a super effective move when it is sent out. Um, so in Krogan's case, it, it sh uh, it's anticipation triggered because Meditite knew Confusion, which Krogan is weak to. It's got a quadruple weakness to it, in fact. All right. Anyway, anyway. Ooh. As is the case with most games, going the wrong way first leads to goodies. So yeah, full exploration. And then the correct path um, doesn't have anyone blocking the way, so you can just go there. Um, yeah, so yeah, they're talking about how they're constantly using energy. This one's the trap. And I think I see an item in the corner there. The 
Stunky? Why do these people have stunkies? Stunky is actually a Pokemon I am I have grown increasingly fond of. Um, it's half poison, half dark, so it's got a very good defensive typing, its only weakness being ground, much like an electric type. And then poison and dark, um, well, dark has good offensive coverage, poison not so much, but it makes really good use of it. I used one in Sword and Shield and it did fine. And despite the fact that its face looks like a butt and that it's constantly farting, I think it's adorable. But that's not the point. The point is, we dropped some rocks on it and now it's dead. Thankfully, we have hidden power, so if we want to not use Rock Tomb, we do have a different option. Because they're half dark, they're immune to Psychic Mind Reader. Um... I think meditate or meditate would be use, more useful than mind reader. Uh, mind reader will just guarantee that the next attack you use will uh, is going to hit no matter what. Um, in general, the the main combo with it is you use mind reader, then you use a move that has horrible accuracy, like dynamic punch or one of the one hit KO moves, like sheer cold. I think in the case of Metatite, they wanted it to be used in tandem with a uh, high jump kick. Uh, that is my assumption based on absolutely no research, though. so take that with a grain of salt. Or if you don't like salt, take it with a grain of pepper. No, Yogapun, how could you miss? We were depending on you and you let us down. And this is your last rock tomb, too, so now we're gonna have to use confusion and or hidden power. Or you could get a crit, that works too. Alright. No, well, recovering power points is one of the reasons we'll have to go back. Um. Hmm, yeah. Oh, but before we do that, let's pick up that item. It was an item! Hooray! X items. So those items are stat boosters. You can use them in battle and it will temporarily boost your Pokemon stats the same as if they used a move that does the same thing. So they're basically, uh, they basically allow for an in-game playthrough to teach a Pokemon nothing but offensive moves. And then if you need to set up, you can just use the items to make up for the lack of offensive moves on your critters. So, yeah, uh, they make in-game playthroughs very much very easier. And that was the sentence I just said. <sighs> hey, who's in? We are nearing the top of the Team Galactic base, but we had to come back and heal because Yogapun ran out of power points, and power points tend to be a lot more difficult to restore. Um, so you can always buy items that restore hit points and whatnot, but when it comes to restoring power points, uh, there are a fixed number of items in the game that you can pick up that will do the same, or restore power points. Usually ethers and elixirs and all that. And since they're named after the better healing items in games like Final Fantasy, it tends to be a little bit confusing. What isn't so confusing, though, is we're gonna talk to this lady. And she is a trainer! Oh my goodness, and she's gonna attack us with a Pokemon she stole. How dare! You know, just a Glamio. They really like their Glamios in Team Galactic. Is it Galactic? I keep mixing it up with Generation 5's evil team noun. Their Team Plasma and that, though. Alright, how we doing? Well, we lowered its speed, but we're dealing almost no damage. Let's see how Confusion does. Mm, a little bit more. So, yeah, the attack, the attack drop and our same type attack bonus contributes to making Confusion the better option. I do have to get into the habit of thinking about more than just the Pokemon stats. And super effective. You don't want to fall for that super effective swindle. But, um, yeah, even though Meditite's uh, physical attack is often better than a special attack, 
Uh, that doesn't mean its special attack is completely unusable. Uh, especially since this one... Uh, no, its attack and special attack are pretty much even. But because of the way pure power works, it's technically got double the attack stat as opposed to uh, just having to rely purely on what its special attack says it is. All right, let's pop a potion. Woo, we have popped that potion. Oh wait, I didn't check the levels. 19 to 21, it's almost Plant Pun's turn to battle again. Oh, well, I should probably consider just dropping Plant Pun soon. I wanted it for rock and ground and water coverage. And Meditite covers one of those things. All right, this is the trap. So let's go over here. Do, do, do. Our mission is to, oh, I clicked through that too fast. Eh, I'm too used to skipping dialogue. Like, even with, um... Oh, no, he has a Kadabra. Anyway, um... But even with a, um, a playthrough of, um... Omega Ruby I started up to try and get some more, uh, Japanese reading skills in, uh, worked in, I'm still not actually reading the text boxes at all, even though I should be doing that just to practice, but... Yeah, Pokemon is one of those games where I don't feel like I need to read because I'm that familiar with them. Hmm. Kind of makes it a bad series to try and immerse with, but whatever, whatever. Anyway, we'll finish off with Hidden Power for that guaranteed accuracy. Or guaranteed hit, what have you. Guaranteed hits are always Gouda. Yay! Won't go unpunished. Oh, I am not the Punisher, mister. I am just a kid. All right, anyway, let's pop a couple potions. Yay! We have popped our potions. Now to go up these stairs to see what's over here. Ooh, items. Let's see, a blue shard. Ooh. And... A revive. Hey, that wasn't a trap. They lied to me. How dare people lie about things and stuff. Um... Yeah. Okay, I thought he was gonna be a trainer, but he was not. Okay, then. Alright. I wonder what this says. Let's see. Working for world peace, Team Galactic. So you claim. Anyway, I recommend picking up this item before talking to the lady over there, because you battle her and then you get teleported out of the building. So if you want to pick it up, you'd have to come all the way back. It's so tedious. Eh, did you want something? How silly of me to even ask. You want to free the Pokemon? Fine. I, Jupiter, will deal with you. Oh yeah, this is another Gala Team Galactic admin. Her name is Jupiter. It's where she went to get stupider. Oh, no, she's not really all that smart. I mean, she's stupid enough to have joined Team uh, Galactic in the first place, but otherwise I wouldn't say she's any stupider than the average Pokemon NPC. <clears throat> Oh, anyway, we have hit the Zubat with our Rock Tomb. It has retaliated with the Wing Attack. Uh, let's go for a Confusion. Uh, hopefully that is enough. Hey, it was! Hooray! Anyway, uh, like Mars before her, she has only got two Pokemon at the moment. Her second one being Skuntank. And her scun tank can be quite troublesome to deal with, as you can see. Also, that sprite is not doing it any favors. Anyway, um, like its base form stun key, scun tank um, <clears throat> is half dark, half poison, so its only weakness is to ground type moves. And I don't believe there are actually any ground type moves you can get access to at this point in the game. So even if you wanted to hit it with a super effective move, um, your options to do so would be very limited. Fortunately, we burned it, so now we don't have to worry about that. 
Unfortunately, it's using smoke screen against us. Oh wait, no, there is ground type move you can get access to. Geodude learns magnitude. How could I forget about that? Geodude is a bro, bro. Let's continue to try and burn it, but uh, accuracy drops. Oh. I think I'm going to want to swap fire pun out here. Um, because if Fire Pun faints, I don't have a reliable way to deal damage to Scud Tank, so we'll use uh, our reliable Plant Pun as bait. Alright, so what can we do with Plant Pun? Well, let's just go for the Mega Drain. It's not going to be very helpful, but it's a thing we can do. Part, part of excelling in Pokemon battles is knowing knowing when your active Pokemon has to fold them so you can live to battle another day. And in that case, we definitely need to pull Charmeleon out. Or Fire Pun. I gotta use their nicknames because the gangs won't. Alright, but I believe with it at that current health total, Fire Pun can finish the job with an Amber. Probably could have just used Dragon Raid, but I'm trying to see how much, how well I can do without having to rely on my crutch. Well, current crutch. All right, there we go. All right, I'm probably gonna stick to using special attacks with this particular Charmander, um, since it's got a nature that reduces its physical attack, and getting the good moves for boosting its, and the getting the good boosting moves requires breeding, which I also don't intend to do. Well, aren't you tough? It's okay, though. Our official Pokemon statue investigation is finished. Mars has collected energy from the Valley Windworks. We're pretty much finished here. I'll let you in on one little thing. Our boss is researching the myths of ancient Pokemon. With the power of mythical Pokemon, he will become the ruler of Sinnoh. I suggest you keep out of Team Galactic's affairs from now on. This is your last warning. I got my Clefairy back, and it's all thanks to you. But that Team Galactic. They said, Clefairy came from space, hand it over. Their logic baffles me still. It's like they are from space. Anyway, they're gone now. Thank you so very much. I can't thank you enough right now, but cruise by my cycle shop, okay? Oh, I thought you would automatically take us there. Well, whatever. That gives me time to comment on something. So, um... When I originally played Diamond and Pearl, I had thought that they were setting Cynthia up as the boss of Team Galactic, because that line from Jupiter about their boss researching the myths, uh, myths of Sinnoh, lined up with Cynthia uh, when she told us when we bumped into her here in Eterna City, I'm studying the myths of ancient Sinnoh, or something to that effect. And then Cynthia does have a habit of showing up in places that, um have to deal with Team Galactic. So, I got the impression that they were using her as a red herring on my first playthrough, or, or I was thinking that she might actually be the boss of Team Galactic. But since Jupiter did specify that their boss is in fact a boy, it takes Cynthia off the table. Alrighty. But still, I found it rather neat that there was, um, there was some stu subtlety in the approach to why Cynthia's traveling around so much, and that she could potentially be important. Eh. There we go. Ew! No, 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 wrong button, wrong button! We need to deposit Geodude! And then Geodude was my Smash Rocks guy, so we're gonna have to teach that to Bidoof. Alright, come here, Rock Smash. Alright, and Bidoof, you wanna learn how to do that, don't you? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Okay. Slightly tempted to teach that to Metatite still, but yeah, no, we'll, we will hold off on that temptation. He does not need fighting type moves at the moment. All right, anyway. Speaking of Cynthia, here she is again. Oh, there you are. I was looking for you. I've got something nice. I wanted you to have this Pokemon egg. Will you accept it? Oh, yeah, sure. 
Oh my goodness, the lag. That's wonderful. The Pokemon inside the egg is happy too. I'm sure of it. Keep that egg with you in your party of Pokemon. A Pokemon will hatch from it while you are traveling. I would be happy to know what it will help. I will be happy to know that it will help fill another page of your Pokedex. See you again. Yeah, if you don't have space in your party and you tell her, yes, I would like to take the egg, she'll tell you to go and deposit a Pokemon and won't let you go into the bike shop until you do. Hey, I, I should have tested what happens if you say no. Thanks for rescuing me. This is something to show my thanks. It's the latest model bicycle. You must take it. I insist. It's the latest model, so I'll read the operating manual to you. Press the B button to ship, shift up or down. In third gear, you can't go all that fast, but it's easier to control. In fourth gear, it gets harder to steer and stop, but it's fast. Really? So, yeah, the bicycle is very important for um, traversal in these games, because though, uh, as I pointed out uh, way back in the Orberg Gate, um, there are ramps that you need to use your bicycle to go up and down, and then um, I think there are also some slopes where you have to be riding really fast on your bike in order to get up them. All right, well, in any case, I think there is one last thing we can do before we hit the brakes on this part, and that is talk to this guy. Lucas, long time, no see. Oh, you look puzzled. You're wondering who I am. I'm Professor Rowan's assistant, and Dawn's father. I've come a long way to help you on your adventure at the professor's behest. Lucas, let me ask you, how many Pokemon have you met? Oh my, you've met 43 Pokemon. Wonderful. Yes, bravo. Professor Rowan should be delighted. Here's something for you. Oh, hey, that's the AXP share. All right, so this is the original bestest version of the EXP share. Well, actually, it's not the original. Let me get to it. Um, this is the uh, most well-known or well-used most used version of the EXP share. So it's a held item, you give it to a Pokemon, and whether or not that Pokemon participates in battle, it'll get half of the experience points as if it did. So, um, yeah, that is the original, well not original, the very original way the EXP share worked was that it gave experience to all your active Pokemon. They changed it to a held item in generation two when they added held items, and then from there it was a whole big thing. But in any case, this is definitely the version of the EXP share I prefer, since it can make it very easy to catch a Pokemon up just by slapping it on them and then continuing like normal, as opposed to having it on at all times where all your Pokemon end up overpowered. I kinda am not a very big fan of that. Anyway, since we're saving, I'm gonna cut that off here. So thank you all for watching, and we will see you all next time.